Hi, and welcome to the 12th video in our Cybersecurity Labs for Beginners. So in the last few videos, we've taken a look at OpenVAS or the Greenbone Security Assistant, which is the free open source vulnerability scanner that you can use. It is quite good, especially if you're just a hobbyist or a home lab environment that you don't really use a lot of enterprise level software. But as soon as you're going into your typical workforce or even in your home lab, if you're using things that are more enterprise focused, that open vast community feed will not be sufficient to really be able to scan for all those vulnerabilities. The open vast community feed just doesn't have them. So you would have to then pay for that open vast basic. But luckily, Tenable has a product called Nessus and it has a free tier called Nessus Essentials, which lets you scan up to 16 IP addresses completely for free. And what's really nice too, is they only hold the 16 licenses for 90 days. So basically when you scan an IP address, that will remain taking up a license for 90 days. Once you have not scanned it for 90 days, that license will be available to be then reused on another IP address. So it's kind of wonderful in that sense. And honestly, if you have a home lab, you might not have more than 16 IP addresses to scan within your home lab. I fully get it. If you are planning to do this and you are scanning your whole home network, 16 IP addresses might not be enough, uh, especially if you have a lot of smart devices. But this is going to be the full Nessus catalog. So you will find all the vulnerabilities that Nessus professional or Nessus expert would find. Um, so it is very good in that sense. And by all means, this video is not sponsored by Tenable or Nessus. This is just something that I've used on my own home lab. And it is something that we use um, in a professional environment as well once you pay for those expert or professional licenses, which for your home lab, they are quite expensive. They're in the $6,000, $9,000 range. Um, and I believe that is Canadian dollars. Um, Cause when I'm looking from their, on their website, I'm looking from Canada. So I'm gonna assume that those are Canadian dollars, but it might even be American dollars. I'm not a hundred percent positive on that. So let's go ahead and let's actually get the Nessus Essentials so we can install it on our Kali machine here. So the easiest way to really find the Nessus Essentials is to actually just type Nessus Essentials into your favorite search engine. Because otherwise, it is quite hard to find on the Nessus website. But as you can see here, and I'll put the link in the description down below as well we actually have the Tenable Nessus Essentials, which is the free product from Tenable that provides the high speed in-depth vulnerability scanning for up to 16 IP addresses per scanner. Um, obviously there is no support, there is no uh, compliance checks, uh, content audits. So there are a few little uh, limitations of course, but as far as the vulnerability scanning is concerned, these are actually very, very, good and you will get definitely your bang for your money because it's free um, and it is just a one year license so i believe that you are able to re-register i am not 100 percent sure yet because my year has not fully come up for expiration that being said i'm sure you could just create a new email address and get another one year license for your home lab uh, but that i'm actually not a hundred percent sure on um, so let's go ahead and let's just put in uh, some information here to be able to get our license. I'm just going to put jacked programmer here and we are going to put the jacked programmer. Oops. And, uh, look, come here and, uh, might as well. If there are any updates from Tenable, maybe they increase the amount of IPs that they're scanning. All right. So once we actually have that here, we're actually going to be receiving an email address with the activation code. And we are then given the download section here. So we're going to click download. 
And then here it's going to bring you to the downloads page. So here we can actually select the version. We are going to select 10.10.1. And then it will give you a bunch of different platforms here that you can install it for. As you can see, there is a bunch here. There's, there's a bunch of Linux machines. You can install this on Mac OS. You can also install this on a Windows machine as well. So that is awesome. So let's go ahead and let's actually find our Debian Kali Linux here because that's what we're going to be installing it on. And we are going to hit download here. And we are going to agree to the license conditions. And this is going to download a package, a .deb package. Now, this is where maybe a lot of people don't really know what to do with those .deb packages, especially if you're new to the Linux environment. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to open up a terminal here. And we're just going to do ls just to know where we are, or you could also do pwd and that will tell you your present working directory. But here we can actually see that we have access to our downloads. So we're going to do cd downloads and then we're going to do an ls here. And we are going to see that we do see the nessus-10.10.1-debian dash dot dot, uh, dot um, and it's the .deb package here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a dpkg for dpackage space dash i space. And then we're going to put the name of that package there. So all I do is I put the capital N and then I do a tab completion there. And you are just going to hit enter. And it says that we're going to need the super user privilege. So we're just going to add sudo there and we're going to do the d pkg dash i nessus and it's going to prompt for our password so we're going to put in that password and it's going to unpack that nessus and completely install it and as you can see here now it's telling you that you can start the nessus scanner and then go to the actual web page here so what we are going to do now is we're going to do the uh, sudo system ctl start nessus d all right and now what we're going to do is we are going to open up a new tab in our firefox here and we are going to just go back to so it tells us to go to https colon slash slash our nessus hostname or ip colon 8834 so let's go to https colon slash slash we're going to do local host colon 8832 uh, i think it was 8832 oh 8834 my bad 8834 and we're going to get this warning here we're just going to click on advanced and then we're going to click on accept the risk and continue it's just because it's got that self-signed certificate there and we are going to see that the Nessus is actually going to be initializing. So this is a little bit kind of like the OpenVAS. We will actually notice that we won't be able to do a scan right away in Nessus. Even once we actually finish this complete setup, it's going to take a little bit of time, especially depending on the resources that you've assigned your virtual machine. So we're just going to wait for this initialization process to finish. And then we're going to go ahead and, oh, and there it is actually. So once we have this welcome to Nessus setting here, you can definitely register offline if you would like. What I like to do is I like to actually go ahead and click continue. And then here it's going to give you a bunch of options here. So it's going to say set up a purchased instance of Nessus, start a trial of Nessus expert, start a trial of Nessus professional or register for Nessus Essentials. Now, if you already have other Tenable products installed, you can also link the Nessus to those other products. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do register for Nessus Essentials, and we are gonna click on continue. And now here, this is where you would actually be able to do that activation code step that we did on their website directly here. What I like about doing it on the website, it also gives me just that download page right away. So I don't even have to worry about that. And once I get to this step, 
I can go ahead and just click on skip here. And it's going to ask for our activation code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my email here. And we're going to have an email here that says welcome to Tenable um, Nessus. And it's going to say welcome to Tennis uh, Nessus Essentials and congratulations. And it's going to give us our activation code. So let's go ahead and let's copy that activation code here. And we are going to click on continue and then continue once again. And it's going to ask us to create a username here. So I'm going to just create the username as admin here. Now, of course, this is not recommended, especially in a production level environment. Usually, if you are creating an administrator account, you're always going to want to use something other than admin. So actually, for the good practice, let's actually just name mine Jacked, just for Jacked Programmer here. And we're going to put in our password that we want. And we're going to click on submit here. And it's going to say that the setup is complete and that it is now going to initialize some more. So it's going to download some plugins. It's going to do a bunch of different steps here. We're actually going to let this finish in this video. And I'm going to show you a little bit around the um, Nessus Essentials. And then in the next couple videos, we're going to do like what we did for the open boss. We're going to do a bunch of little different scans here and there to be able to actually see how we can use Nessus more efficiently. And we can also go ahead and compare our results from our Nessus scans and our open vast scans. And we will actually see quite a few differences in those results. So let's go ahead and let's just pause the recording here and wait till this analyzation is complete. All right, so as you can see here, the analyzation is complete here, but we can actually still see that the plugins are compiling and that Nessus functionality will be limited till it's actually done here. Um, so I think we can get that. So compiling plugins, it's only at 8%. So this does take quite a bit of time, especially on the machine. If you gave it the same resources that I did, it's gonna take a little bit longer and also depending on your internet connection as well. But as you can actually see here, you can see a bunch of the events, but here we can actually click on scans here. And if we, we cannot click on create a new scan, you're gonna notice that right away. And that is exactly, if you guys remember OpenVAS, before the system was actually fully initialized and it took a while for all those initial feeds to synchronize. This is what we're dealing with in Nessus Essentials as well. So we won't be able to do any scans till all that is actually complete, which right now it is at 20%. So it's gonna take some time. So this is where I'm actually gonna end the video for today for you guys. So you guys are just gonna wait for that to finish and then you guys will be actually able to run scans. And in the next video, I will actually go over and how to perform the scans and go over some of those different options that are available to you in the Nessus Essentials. But at least now you guys have another tool. And as you can see, this one was quite a bit easier to install, I think, over OpenVAS. Although OpenVAS isn't super hard to configure, it's really only easy to configure on Kali Linux. And if you know a lot about Docker to get their Docker container up, what's really nice about Nessus is that it works on Windows, it works on Mac OS, it works on a bunch of Linux distributions, and it comes as a very easy executable or Debian package that you can just easily install. And what is also nice is that yes, you can access it from the local host, but if we actually open up a web browser here on my actual machine, um, and if I can actually remember what the IP address is for this, um, I don't actually remember. I think it's 172.30.2. Um, Let me actually go ahead and take a look here just to give you guys another look at what it could look like. Uh, so it's gonna be the 192.168.50.102. 
colon 8834 and we're just going to put our https in front of there and you're going to see that the connection is in private but we can still go to advanced and we can still go to continue and here we can actually access it through here so what it does is it sets up all the rules to also be able to access your nessus environment from other computers so you're not limited to have to go on to your Kali machine to be able to do it if you have other machines on your network that has access to that server or that machine that you installed Nessus Essentials on you are able to fully run your scans from that machine so it's honestly really nice you don't have to go into your virtual box as long as your virtual box is initialized you can actually use your host computer to go into Nessus Essentials and do all the scans. Of course, you could do this with OpenVAST, but it requires a little bit more configuration. So this is why, again, I find Nessus Essentials is just a little bit simpler to use. And of course, all those enterprise vulnerabilities that you'll be able to find will benefit you a lot in your production environment and also your home lab, especially if you use what enterprises use in your home lab this will give you at least that full visibility of those vulnerabilities. Now, if there's anything that you guys would like to see specific, please let me know in the comment section down below. I also was thinking about doing videos in the near future on patch management using something like Action One. If you guys want to see other patch management, or if you guys would like to see Action One patch management, please let me know in the comment section down below. Again, I'm using Action One and suggesting Action One because they give away 200 endpoints to be able to scan, which is definitely very useful in a home lab. Again, you don't really want to spend a lot of money, especially if you're just trying to build that experience to be able to find jobs in the IT field, cybersecurity field. Maybe you're just trying to get that help desk position and all of these different little skill sets will really help you get those positions well thank you for watching this video if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button hit that like button also be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and i will see you guys on that next video